Good afternoon, Clay. Hey, I'm Deborah you Blanton. Clay here. It's nice to nice to be here on your place. This is our Cleveland County Kitchen Show for the month of October, and we're highlighting squash, which you usually think of as being produced in the fall. We'll call it winter squash, but Clay actually plants his squash early on. And so I'm going to have you tell us about that, Clay. Yeah, we start our uh, winter squash uh, actually when we plant our first yellow squash plants. And we'll do uh, acorn squash, butternut squash, and spaghetti squash. And we pick it and store it uh, over the summer until it's sold in the late fall. Now, the name of your place is Indian Creek, is That's that right? right? Yeah, Indian Creek Farm. And why does it have that name? Well, the uh, main, I guess, lifeblood of the farm is Indian Creek, which is this. This is the Indian Creek River bottoms here, and uh, we irrigate out of uh, the Indian Creek solely all the time. So uh, we do all drip irrigation with uh, some nice new pumps we got through the Equip grant this year. So uh, we got everything transferred over to drip irrigation this year, which is uh, saves us a lot of time, money, and resources, and decreases nutrient leaching and uh, decreases water usage. Yeah. Uh, we're standing kind of in front of all the greenhouses? Yeah, yeah. So what all do you start in your greenhouse? Well, we start with, uh, we start in early February with uh, peppers and tomatoes. We start everything by seed, grow them into transplants and uh, move them into a one gallon pot so we can go in the field early to get a early crop of tomatoes. Uh, one greenhouse when we get when we pull the big pot out big pots out to go to the field we will uh, do greenhouse tomatoes in one of the big greenhouses back there um, also do above in the higher level of the greenhouse we'll do hanging flower baskets i know you say you uh, plant a lot of your plants in plastic yep, yep. and that you recycle some of your plastic yeah i'll so double and double and triple crop the uh, plastic mulch yeah. And it saves me a lot of money and time. But I'll pull, a, sometimes we'll pull a, a, a planting up or whatever it be, squash, and go back in the next day and plant more plants in there. Uh -huh. Well, let's go look at some of your squash. Yeah. Okay. And now they feel cool. Is yeah. it, and I saw, was there an air conditioner in there? Yeah. To yeah. keep them cool. Yeah. And then when it gets too cold, you have, you say your propane is. Well, I don't. Um, I don't really heat my storage facility because I don't run into situations where it is too cold. Because oh, okay. I'm usually sold out by by the time it would get of too cold. Of course. Or that looks very well insulated right. as well. Right. Yeah. So, they don't usually yeah. hold. So I don't have my main issues just keep them cool and keeping bugs and uh, sure and insects out of them. Yeah. So. Well, this looks beautiful, and of course we're going to cook some of these. Right. So y'all stay tuned for that. Um, so how do you know when to pick them, I guess would be a good thing to ask. Well, usually uh, if your vines are healthy, when your vines start to deteriorate, that's when I usually okay. start knowing they're done. And they got a little green uh, a little green on top of them, and as that starts to go away, y you can start picking them. But uh, even even when they're small, they're still good. There's not, there's not really a, a certain time you have to wait until you're just... You can wait until a good seed cavity forms in them, cut a few open to make sure they got a good seed okay. cavity in them. Okay. And that, that and really, which, which is your indication they're already right, picked. Right, right. And, okay. and we pick them, uh, we, we pick them one time just to reduce trips to the field. Well, stay tuned, folks. Nancy Abassier Kong and I are going to be talking about the nutritional value of a butternut squash. <music> Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. I chose to come back because I had four children, a wife, I never completed high school, had to quit my senior year to go to work, got laid off, didn't have too many options and seemed like a good idea at the time. I came back and got my GED uh, because I figured that was be more of a fast track to a career and it was. If you've never thought about it, just think about it. 
go get your GED. Just go, just go learn. Just go, just go learn. Hi, I'm Linda Hopper, and I'm excited about Woman to Woman right here on C19 TV. Each month, my guests and I would chat about issues relating to women in general, but with a special focus on women right here in Cleveland County. Our topics will range from serious issues such as domestic violence and workplace challenges to fun topics such as fashion and healthy lifestyles and much, much more. So please join me as we discuss the issues, interests, and inspiration of women everywhere on Woman to Woman. Welcome back, Cleveland County. We're in the studio this morning with Nancy Abassie Kong, who is the Family and Consumer Sciences Director through the mm -hmm. Cooperative Extension. And we're talking about winter squash, Nancy. Yes. So if you just want to, of course, we have run white right in your hand, and that is actually what we're going to be cooking uh, for the cooking part of this show. Okay. But there are lots of different kinds, and I'm sure chock full of nutrients. Oh, yes. So this is certainly the time of year for us to be talking about winter squash and introducing them to some of our viewers, and then others are very familiar but in doing some research for our uh, fact sheet that I will be writing to go along with our program, mm -hmm. uh, I learned that winter squash, butternut squash, are relatively new, uh, having been commercially introduced in 1944. Oh. So uh, since that time, winter squash, the general category, does include butternut, which is what we have here, mm -hmm. acorn squash, yes. uh, even pumpkins are in this same winter squash category, uh -huh. as are spaghetti squash and several others that you'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, I must tell you, our farmer that we interviewed, Clay Hefner, mm -hmm. grows all of that. Great. Mm -hmm. Even the spaghetti squash. And aren't we fortunate to have all of those winter squash varieties right here in Cleveland County and even in area grocery stores for our viewers who don't live here with us and are not able to come to our farmer's market. Uh, but if you do go to the market or the grocery store, mm -hmm. fall and winter, you will see many varieties of squash and they are so nutritious that you will want to put one in your cart uh, and take it home and do, use our recipe that the chef will prepare. Yes. And then I also will have some additional recipes uh, to use butternut and some of the other squash on our Cleveland County Kitchen fact sheet Great. that you can access online. Great. Well, now I know because they're so tough skinned that storage is probably not a problem too much, but I know there's mm -hmm. probably a um, an optimum temperature at which to store these. You don't want it too cold or too warm. Right. You'll keep them in a cool, uh, dry, you know, dark place. Uh, we don't have to refrigerate them. Okay. But when you get them home, do go ahead and wash and dry them. You know, if they oh. have any dirt or sand or whatever, just go ahead. A lot of things when we put them in the refrigerator, we do not wash. Yes, this is yes. one that you can go ahead oh, and, and wash off just good. in general, mm -hmm. dry it. You uh -huh. don't want to leave it wet and then just store it in a, a cool, dark place. Okay. Uh, then once you cut it, of course, uh, you would refrigerate right. uh, any unused portions. You can keep uh, uncut squash, butternut squash, uh, one to three months. Okay. Uh, if it is like this one is a is a very good sample because it's heavy yes. for its size. Yes. It has a smooth skin. Mm -hmm. uh, no blemishes or cuts. Right. No soft spots. Right. Any of those kinds of things you would want to avoid those because they're not um, going to be a, a good product. Right. Also, uh, the skin or the rind on this is not edible, uh, so. 
if you get one that is soft and so forth, then it's immature. Oh, so okay. you'll know when it's really ready. Certainly. And of course, to prepare this, uh, you would, if you're going to bake it, mm -hmm. uh, you can bake them, microwave them, uh, lots of other things that you can do. Right. And we'll have that. But just cut it in half, remove the seeds and the strings, mm -hmm. and then place it face down uh, in a, pan, a roasting pan. Okay. Uh, and then uh, put just a little bit of, of water. Uh, you can cover it and you're ready to bake. Or you can pierce it and microwave okay. it as well, okay. uh, which would be a quick method. Right. Uh, you could even cut it in cubes yes. and roast it okay. uh, if you wanted to, uh, peel it, go ahead and cube it, roast it with your other roasted vegetables mm -hmm. and so forth. So a variety of ways. Um, often we'll see butternut squash uh, soup. Exactly. And we will have a soup recipe uh, on our fact sheet. Okay. Well, now, the biggest question I have, Nancy, is how you get into one of those. I mean, the rind is so thick, and it's almost like you have to take up. I don't know, an, an axe to get into <laughs> one of these things. Is there a secret? Oh, well, a good sharp knife, for one thing. <laughs> and okay. go ahead and lay it down. Uh, right. or cut off of the bottom so that you are working with a stable uh, piece of, of uh, this is a fruit, by the way. Oh, it so, is a Although fruit. we use oh. it as a, a vegetable. Um, okay. So, but yes, be careful while you're cutting. And I will uh, try to look up some additional tips oh, on the, oh, ways that and we'll have that in our fact sheet as well. Now, when we wonder why should we be eating the uh, egg oh, winter yeah, squash yes, yes. or butternut squash, yes. what is it going to give us? Right. Excellent source of both vitamins A and C, beta carotene, potassium, magnesium. So some of the minerals that we don't always get. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, our vitamins are, you know, pretty standard in your vegetables, mm -hmm. but some of those other minerals. Uh, high in fiber low fat, low sodium, mm -hmm. cholesterol free. Mm. So a lot of good qualities when we are trying to eat uh, a more healthy and balanced diet. Right, mm -hmm. right. One last question. Okay. I just couldn't take that butternut squash and put it in the whole thing, put it in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. That wouldn't work, right? Well, ordinarily, you would remove the seeds know, and the strings I know, but first. if it's too, if, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, would it explode? I've always wondered. I would pierce it first if oh, you were going idea. to do that. Pierce it, but again, uh, that's something that I will have to look up those kind of details. Okay. <laughs> so look for the fact sheet on winter squash, butternut in particular, okay. so that we can answer that, that that's uh, perfect. additional... <laughs> Perfect. My good friend Deborah here has another idea, and I will check on that. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Cleveland um, County, for watching. Um, we've learned so much about squash, Nancy. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We're going to be cooking it in the kitchen here in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Steve Putnam, and I'd like to invite you to join me for the next Talk of the Town. Each week I get to meet with some of the most interesting people in Cleveland County. And each show is packed with information you need to know to stay connected to our community. From promoting upcoming events to discussing local subjects that impact you, Talk of the Town has a little something for everyone. Plus, we're on every day, so it's easy to catch up with us. That's Talk of the Town. Every day, every week, right here on C19 TV, Cleveland County's channel. Only on Time Warner Cable. Few places are as active, as vital, or evolving as quickly as our schools. And that's especially true here in Cleveland County. I'm Rhonda Benfield, and I hope you'll join me for the next edition of School Matters. On each show, I talk with the teachers and administrators who make the Cleveland County system the success story it is. And we go beyond the headlines and discuss the issues facing education in the 21st century. Why? Because school matters. Down in Cleveland County, there's history in store A revolutionary place of patriotic lore Businesses, they come here, they like it and they stay 
Feeling calm is in a revolutionary way Down here in Cleveland County Life here gives you more All in Cleveland County The Revolutionary War Down here in Cleveland County History and lore It's all in Cleveland County and Tomorrow even more Cinderella found the pet that fits her perfectly. Tiana gave her pet the royal treatment. Belle found beauty where no one else did. And you can too. Share your heart. Share your love. Bring home your forever friend. Make a shelter pet part of your world. Happily Ever After begins at theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome back, Cleveland County. We have just talked about our butternut squash, and we're in the kitchen, as I promised, cooking it. We're here with Ashley Bailey, who is the owner of the Uptown Olive Store. They also have vinegar. And this is an opportunity for her to show you what she can do in the kitchen, plus using her olive oil from the olive oil store. So, Ashley, what are we cooking today? We are going to cook creamy, nuki butternut squash with spinach. Okay. Sounds very nutritious besides the squash. Exactly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to drizzle about two to three tablespoons of the walnut olive oil from, of course, Uptown Olive. Mm -hmm. And you also have multiple kinds of olive oil that taste that way but I'm sure you chose that for this particular recipe. Yes, Deborah, I did. So what you're gonna do is take um, the medium squash, we've already cut it up into cubes, um, and you're gonna put it in your pan, and you're gonna brown it um, for about eight to 10 minutes. So there is squash and then a whole onion in this pan. So you put the raw squash in the pan along with the raw onion? Yes. Okay. So um, you took the raw squash and the raw onion and we're browning it right now in your olive oil? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we're going to let that brown. Okay. Then we're going to add the gnocchi in this pan. And so we've already browned it just for time's sake. Um, so we're just going to let that brown for a little bit. Now, let's talk about gnocchi. Okay. Where do you buy this? Um, you can find it at your grocery store. Okay. Um, you can find it where the dry pasta is. Okay. Um, so um, it's already prepackaged, and um, you just open it up and put it in your pan and kind of brown it. So it's really already cooked. Yes. And uh, then, as you say, you just warm it up for the dish. And that is a type of pasta. Yes. Okay. It's a potato. Oh, a potato. Yes, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add um, a cup of chicken broth. Okay. Or actually, for vegetarians, they could use uh, the vegetable yes. broth. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna let that warm. Okay. And then we're gonna add a third cup of half and half. Okay. Need to let that simmer for about five minutes. Okay. We're gonna add our garlic. And for those that do not have a garlic press, then you can uh, do this little neat trick of taking your garlic, smashing it with your hand. Okay. That way it busts the peeling off. All right. And then you can just use your grater and grate right over your dish. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. To add your garlic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Then we're going to add... Uh, make sure that you measure out your hot pepper. Um, one evening I did not, and I ended up putting a little bit too much, so it can get over spicy. In other words, then, you can open up the wrong end yes, of your hot pepper. Yes, and then we're just going to add a little salt and pepper to taste. Okay. So that's stirring. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add our gnocchi. 
Which has a little color to it, yes. actually. Uh huh. Okay. And then we will add our spinach to this. And how much spinach are we adding? Um, it says six cups, um, and so you're just going to add that in there and then let it wilt. Okay. So I'm already seeing this is quite a very quick dinner as yes. well. Uh, while, we're, while this is heating up and the spinach is wilting, yes. uh, how long have you been in downtown Shelby, Ashley? Um, I've been there for a year and a half now. Okay, all right. But then you have also branched out, have you not, downtown Shelby? I have. Um, I have just now opened up Uptown Sweets and Treats. So we serve um, frozen yogurt, gelato, and Italian ice. Um, my husband and I, we just got back from Texas, and so our next product that we will be adding to the store is the gourmet popcorn. Oh, how great. Wonderful. So a great addition to Shelby. Yeah, absolutely it is. And did I not hear the word chocolate somewhere? Yes, that there is a be? possibility that we could have fudge and um, even um, adding candy so oh. that you're able to come in and just fill up a bag of candy, um, fudge, um, gourmet popcorn, so yes. Well, that's that sounds wonderful. So you really have taken over half of Shelby downtown. <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Okay, uh, and then we have one more ingredient to add. Yes, we're going to add some um, Parmesan cheese. Okay. And that's a great little grater. That's the same grater you used for the garlic. garlic. Uh -huh. Yes. So we're going to add the Parmesan cheese. Okay, and I hear it bubbling. Yes, mm -hmm. it's bubbling now. Okay. And then we're going to sprinkle some of the sage. And that is fresh, fresh sage, sage, folks. And if you don't have fre fresh sage, then you can get that at your local grocery store. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to give that a quick stir, and then this pan is able to go right into the oven, and it will broil, um, and then I, it'll broil for about two minutes, and then we will bring it out, and then this is what your and that's the finished product, finished product right looks like. Right. So if you want to stick that in the ref in yep. the in the stove, yep. and then we'll put it out on the platter, which I think is such a beautiful thing. So other than probably chopping up the butternut squash, which probably took you, uh, that takes the that most takes time the of most the entire time. recipe. Yes. All right, and then we're going to put the finished product on the platter. Okay, and I could actually, well, there, there we go. Let me hold that. Let me turn this off so we don't mm -hmm. get burned. And I love your raw spinach leaves around it. Okay, oh, that's perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Lots of color. Oh, that's great. That, and that's that's good enough right okay. there, actually. Yep, one more time. All right. All right, we're going to set this <clears throat> right there. The finished product. Yes. Well, Ashley, thank you so much thank for you. your expertise and for sharing the information about what you have downtown. Welcome back again next month. We'll be talking about sweet potatoes. Thanks for watching.